Got myself some pizza now. Two for ten. Spicy Badge Trio. Hey guys. So it's 7.30. I just got up. Time to get out of the tent and make some breakfast. Today we're at Yarry Hut and we're going to be riding to Collie. So it's not too big of a day, I think, uh, I'll check, but I think it's about 44 kilometers. So check it out guys, I had the same old setup in this hut, bottom bunk. You'll notice that these are half the size of the other huts as well. Had the tarp down first, because it's quite dusty. Then I set up the tent bug net. And last night I was a bit cold, so I also just like hung the fly over the tent to sort of keep a bit more warmth in. I slept pretty good, so I'm just deconstructing everything now. Just taking the air mattress down, gonna take the sleeping bags out. These are definitely a lot smaller, but this is a really good hut. It's got the floor, the sealed floor. So there must be birds eating honky nuts right off the tree above the hut. Just listen. I'm not sure I can see them. They're up there somewhere. I'll show you guys around the hut real quick. So this hut's really good. It's right on the path. And you can see that south that way. And then you've got the bike lock shelter thing there. There's one water tank here, one on the opposite side. There's a little deck, which is really sick. I've just got my bike up here and all my gear as well. And then you've got the two tables and then you sort of saw the bunks already. Two bunks there, two bunks there. They're half the size of all the other huts that we've had further north. And you've got it, yeah, another water tank. Down there's a toilet and this awesome view. <laughs> but yeah, check out that view. Really nice. Try to ignore the honking arts. <laughs> I'm not sure what's down there, if there's like a river down in the bottom of that valley or what. I'm not sure there's any like hike or anything down there. It'd be cool if there was. Very quiet, very peaceful. We feel like we're deep in the forest. I'm not too sure how, <laughs> how close it is to the nearest like road or town. Someone's found a few old railway dog spikes. These hold the railway line to the sleepers, the timber sleepers underneath the tracks. One top tip for the Mundabitty is always bring toilet paper and always take it to the bathroom with you because half of them won't have toilet paper. Not like I expect them to, but yeah, come prepared. And here's the little bathroom. It's tucked away here. All right, so last night I cooked way too much rice. So breakfast is rice with soy sauce and Tabasco again. But I get to enjoy, <laughs> I get to enjoy this view. <laughs> I can't help. It's not exactly peace and quiet though, is it? Guys, we've had a little failure. This strap that was on one of the food pouches has broken. I think it's just actually come apart. The stitching's come off the bag. It just kind of like held it around the fork there. I'm not sure it's like too important really. I'm just gonna pop it in the bottom of the bag there. All right, it's 9.30. The bike's all packed up. We're good to go. We got 44.9 kilometers to Collie. And then we're gonna stealth camp in Collie tonight. So I don't know exactly where that's going to be yet, so that remains to be seen. So I reorganized things on the bike a little bit. I tried to put a bit more of the heavy stuff in the front. I put the butane in the front and the cooker and the oats are in the front as well. So hopefully that makes the back patch a little bit lighter, but then the flip side is I've got leftover rice that I'm going to eat later that's in here, still in the pot. So whether it's actually made a difference or not, I don't know. Hopefully the bag holds up all right to Collie. 
Should be a pretty chill day today. Once we roll into Collie, we're gonna resupply, get some pizza. Uh, there's showers in the park there, we'll, we'll get cleaned up. And then pretty much just hang out, find some Wi-Fi, and then find a place to stealth camp. You could continue on to the next hut, which will be about 54 kilometers, I think. Which I kind of could do that. I probably have the supplies to do that. But I do want to do like the full Mundabiti, show you guys everything. And you know, I kind of want to go into Kali to jump on the Wi-Fi, talk to Taylor a bit, catch up with everything. So I think we'll go into Collie for that reason. It kinda is annoying because Collie is like a diversion, one way in and one way out. So you sort of end up backtracking quite a bit. I don't remember exactly how much it is, but we can lap it when we get to the turn off and find out anyway. Right, so we're an hour into the ride this morning, 13.2 kilometers. It's got a section of main road here. It's a 100 kilometer an hour zone. It's been a few cars, but the, they've passed pretty well. So that's been good. Feeling good. Might have some uh, sugar water and just put my head down for a while. Keep on riding. Been some really nice forest. You guys have seen it. Really nice and cool, some big trees too. All right, it's almost 12 o'clock. I just stopped for a food break. I've just got some of that rice that was left over. Very basic, but it's going down really good. I've just lent the bike up on one of the Mundabiti posts here. It's pretty annoying having to get your stuff out of the back uh, saddle bag when it's, you know, when you're not somewhere convenient with a table. Cause you gotta like pull everything out one by one to get what you want. And then what you want's always the last thing. Cause the pot was like right at the back, for example. But that's cool. Just gonna chill here for like five minutes, eat that rice, and then keep going to Collie. I haven't seen the turn off yet, but it must be close. Here we are. Going to Brook that way. Collie this way. So up to this point where the turn off is, we're at 26 kilometers. So yeah, you go off to the right there to Donnybrook and Collie's to the left. So I'll, I'll lap the GPS now. Oh God. Another burnt out car. That must be number three, I think. So that's the big woman to my right. We were just sharing it for a moment there. Looks like the Mundabiti goes off to the left a bit now. There's a lot of uh, really nice single track coming into Collie. It's some really nice forest as well, really grassy. Lots of the grass trees and stuff. It's really, really good. Very green, I guess. Looks like there's been a fire through here somewhere recently. And it's finally flattened out as well, which is nice. There's a, quite a bit of climbing on this leg of the ride. All right, so we made it into Soldiers Park. I'm in Collie. I um, followed the footpath from a little bit out of town past the cemetery and I didn't see any other signs. So I'm not sure if you're supposed to come like straight through town to the park here or if there's like another way around. But I actually don't see any signs here that mention the Mundabiti at all. There's Waggle Biddy, 
But I don't see any Mandabidi stuff. I was sure that this is where it was supposed to like end here in Kali. Whatever, it doesn't matter. There's some toilets over there, a few picnic tables, there's a kids playground. Skate park as well. A little gazebo. I'm gonna go get some pizza. There's actually an old symbol near the skate park here. So I guess we're on the right track. This way. So being a public holiday, they're actually closed, but they do open at three. The doors open though, and I went in and she actually let me make an order early. Not that it matters, it's not like they're gonna be busy. So now I can go and do something. I, they have public Wi-Fi, so that's one good thing. And I need to wash my clothes, but I've realized Woolworths and Coles might not be open because it's a public holiday. And I don't know if there's like an IGA in town or something, but it would be good to get something for dinner, like some pasta or something. And I need rice and stuff for tomorrow, but I guess I can get it tomorrow if I have to. All right, so it's 20 to four. Got myself some pizza now. Two for 10, spicy veg trio. And I'm setting myself up in the park here, right next to the music shell thing. I had a shower, there's showers in this park as well. This is the park opposite Woolworths and Domino's. The showers are cold, but there's a disabled one. You can take your bike in with you, which is pretty sick. I wash my clothes and I'm gonna hang them up over there have a feast and then just relax for a bit. Just got my stuff all hanging up here. In the past I've used like girls bobby pins for their hair as like lightweight clothes pegs but I actually forgot to bring them. I think I even showed them in the bike packing gear check video but I don't think I've got them anywhere. So I'll just have to keep an eye on it because it'll probably blow off every now and then. So I'm running out of sun for the clothes. I have to move them like right to that side of the line because the Whatever the hell that thing is, that shell thing's making this big shadow. Super annoying. And my, uh, pa is it paracord? Let me know in the comments what you call that rope stuff. I know it's not called rope, I think is it paracord? And so, it's not long enough to like move it somewhere else. I don't think, maybe over there. But check it out. I got some stuff to fix the bag. So just from Woolworths, I picked up some needles and some thread. I'm gonna have a crack at repairing this here. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. But yeah, that tear there. Um, hopefully I can do something with it. I wanna leave the bag on the bike so I might be able to just do it where it is now, you know? See how we go. So I'm like halfway done. It's actually coming up pretty good. I'll be interested to see how strong it is. I don't really know if I started from the right end, but if anyone out there knows anything about sewing, let me know how I'm doing. Check out the repair job guys, stitched up pretty well, hopefully it holds. I'm definitely adding a needle and thread to my essential list for bikepacking gear. But luckily we were able to find something suitable. Cool. So guys, I was literally just about to do a video and tell you how, like what I was doing. And then the Bendigo Bank shell thing just started making music and lights, I'll show you. There's literally no one here. And it was completely dark like 10, 20 seconds ago. And now it's doing this. <laughs> so weird. And so like, part of my problem is I was gonna make some dinner here. And there's a light pole here, but it's still not even turned on. So it's like kind of pitch black. I might move, relocate somewhere where I can actually see what's going on, you know? But yeah, look at that, what the hell? It's like 7.30 at night. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Yeah, so I'm still just hanging out at the same spot. The lights never came on. 
the music's still playing, probably like 45 minutes later, whatever. Got some uh, water boiling with some pasta. Gonna have it just with some classic Dormio. I bought it at Woolies before. Enjoying a bit of this juice as well. It's only three bucks fifty. I'm pretty tired. I'm ready for bed. We're gonna eat and then we're gonna go suss out a stealth camp. Now normally to find a stealth camp in the van or on the bike, I'd use Google Maps with satellite. But the Google Maps satellite doesn't seem to be loading for some reason. I mean the Wi-Fi is really good here, like YouTube and Netflix play. But for some reason the maps aren't loading, so I might just try that again and try and suss somewhere out and I'll let you guys know what I find. Alright, so I feel like I just had the pizza, but I'm going to try and eat some of this pasta up now. And then we're going to go find our camp. Alright, so this is Collie by night. Quite a few kids hanging around, just, I don't know, doing whatever you do when you're a teenager. That music was still going, and I asked the kids, I was like, man, when does it stop? And they said, it doesn't, it goes all night. And it was about the same three songs, just on repeat. Crazy. So anyway... They were pretty surprised. I told them like what I was doing, you know. And they're like, damn, didn't know you could ride that far. I said, yeah, man, for sure. Just, uh, you know, ride 10 Ks one day and 20 the next. Pretty soon you'll be doing 100. Anyway, he asked me where I was going now. I was like, I have no idea. So let's find out together, shall we? All right, guys, I think we found a pretty good spot. It's kind of a bit of bushland down behind the school, I'm next to a fence. Looks like I'm next to a little dam or something. Um, I'm just gonna clear this area out a bit and then set the tent up. In hindsight, I should have staked out a spot before it got dark because it'd be less suspicious, you know? Walking around with the light on's a bit like anyone could see it, you know? But if it's, if you find the spot while it's still light, it's, um, you know, it just looks like you're walking or riding. So yeah, next time I'll scope a spot out first. All right, check it out guys, we're set up. Got the bike just uh, locked up on the fence there. Got the tent set up with the fly as well, just in case it rains. Should be pretty sick. And all the stuff's inside, I just gotta go sort it all out. Let's get in and get to bed. Alright, so I'm set up in the tent now, guys. Pretty much ready for bed. It's just after 10 o'clock, so I'm going to try and get some sleep. Much needed. Hopefully tomorrow I'm feeling good, strong again. I'll probably take the morning off, have lunch here, and then head to the next hut. So make sure you tune in for that. Hit subscribe so you don't miss it. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you like the stealth camping, let me know. And let me know anything else like you're interested in seeing. Thanks for watching.